about how you can see Jesus in the Old Testament. A lot of people say Jesus uh, is not listed in the Old Testament, but I want to show you uh, some, uh, a way that you can see Jesus in, in the Old Testament. He was present in the, in the Old Testament, even though we try to say that he only came uh, on board in the New, but he was still uh, the Son of God even before that. So we're going to look at that this morning. So we're going to have a word of prayer, and then we're going to go into Scripture. Amen? Amen. Dear most precious Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you right now for the word. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for being here. We thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for opening our blinded eyes. Give us a, a ear to hear this word this morning, dear Heavenly Father. Let it not be sown on hollow or, or hard ground, Father, but let it be a seed sown to your kingdom, Father. Holy Spirit, I ask that you go before me. Make your presence known. Be in this and allow me to decrease as you increase. Let me speak your words, Lord Jesus. In your son Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen. amen. So when you look at, uh, we, like I said, we're in Exodus, the 23rd chapter. We're going to be in verse 20. And then when you, when you start to see that uh, Jesus is in the Old Testament, you, 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 go, you go looking for him because he's, he's, through, he's, he's the reason for the New Testament. But you got to understand that he was in, present in the Old Testament and came through into the New Testament. So we're going to take a look at that this morning. And if you have your uh, word, it says in verse 20, Behold, I'm just going to read a couple of verses, then we're going to go back. Behold, I send an angel before thee to keep thee in thy way, to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. Amen for the reading of the word. Amen. When you look in verse 1, it says, Behold, it means to stop what you're doing, to look. Behold means to, to look at what's going on. It says, I have sent, I sent an angel before thee. But when you look at this angel, when you look at this word, it starts with a capital A. It's in caps. So this is a different type of angel. It's a different angel from his messengers, from the ones that he sent to, to Rebecca, to Sarah. It's a different type of angel. It's just, it's not a... Uh, a common angel because it's in caps. He says, I sent him before thee to keep thee in thy way. This is how you know it's Jesus because these are three things. He says, I'm sending him to keep thee in thy way. So we know Jesus from the New Testament keeps us. He keeps us because the Father allows him to keep us. He said, I, I, I do what I see my Father do. I only know what I see my father do. So when he sees that his father is keeping us, then he has no other choice but to keep us because he's doing what he said his father told him to do. His father has told him throughout time to keep us, and that's a wonderful thing. Amen. Jesus has been keeping us since the Old Testament. Yes. Do you not understand what I'm saying? He's still doing the same job. You don't get it still. We complain unless it's payday Friday. We don't want to do the same thing over and over again. We say, oh, this is boy, this is mm -mm, I got to do something new. I need to. But here is Jesus who has been keeping us since the Old Testament. Now we're walking in the New Testament, and he's still keeping us. And he hasn't complained yet. See, I don't think he's a Christian. Because only Christians be complaining like that. If you notice in the church, you got to be an usher. You got to be one week you on the dance beat. I, I didn't like that. I don't like how they do that. You can't be an incensor. I don't like how they did that. So you're doing all these different things because what? You're complaining. Amen. You can't keep your weight. You can't keep... If I tell you to pray for such and such, well, you say, well, I've been praying for two weeks. It's to keep your way. You, it's people you got to keep. Amen. It's things you got to keep doing. You just can't stop it. He didn't
can't stop on us. Where would we be if he would have stopped? Where would we be if he would have been complaining? If he told his father, I don't want to do this no more. I don't want to keep them no more. Next point. He brings thee into a place which he has prepared. See, that's coming out of Revelations. See, he's prepared a place for us. In Revelations, he said, I have prepared a place for you according to John 14, chapter, verse 2. You can look at that in your own leisure. He says, I prepared a place for you. I've got a place waiting for you in glory. Amen. So here is in the Old Testament, he's still preparing a way for us. See, these are the signs that you know that this is Jesus. This is the angel that he's talking about. He says in verse 21, beware of him. That means you got to pay close attention to what he's saying. Beware of him. That doesn't mean you're supposed to fear him. That means you're supposed to be paying attention to what he's speaking into your life. Beware, be cautious of what's going on in your surroundings because he's going to make a way for you to escape. So you got to be, you got to be, you got to beware, you got to pay attention to where he's leading you. You just can't do this all willy nilly. It says, oh, obey his voice. And uh, provoke him not. Don't be, you, you can't rebel. Oh my God, I'm just going to step back before I get struck down. <laughs> See, because we do a lot of rebelling. See, when you rebel, it don't mean that sometimes that we walk away. No, you can rebel by procrastinating. You can rebel by asking somebody else their opinion of it. If God spoke the word in you, why you got to go get a confirmation from man? Amen. So you rebel it. So you provoking him. When he tells you to do something, you're supposed to be on your way doing it. Other than that, you're provoking the Lord. I, I'm just going to say ouch and amen. amen. Because sometimes we have a problem of telling God, the Holy Spirit be nudging on us. And I tell you, when he starts doing that, it's one thing you realize, that you are not on your own schedule. Because you could be on a date, and he wants you to get up and leave that date. You could be in the, in the middle of, um, for the men, a sports game, basketball game at, at the and he wants you to stop watching that game. Ladies, you can be in the middle of scandal. You better put, you better put it on record. Amen. Because if you notice, when you do that enough, he stops nudging because he knows you're not going to come. Been there, done it. That's why I said out. And then it's hard to get back into his presence because you remove yourself so far. So, so in that way, you rebel. When he tells you to wait and come see what I want, I'm drawing you now. It's a reason why I'm drawing you now. It could be an emergency for your family. It could be something contained about your job. It could be something about your health. But you are the one that's procrastinating on. It's you the one that's holding up. Then you say, why well, I ain't got my blessings? Well, your blessings was when he was trying to nudge you. You missed it, so, but it's important for you to get the blessing but it's not important for you to go when he calls. That's provoking. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you how, how you see how we miss God in the small details. That's all I'm trying to do today. He says, he will not pardon your transgressions. He says, for my name is in him. The only person I know name is in someone is when they call him Emmanuel. God is with us. His name is Jesus. Amen. So his father named him. So God is in his name. That's why every knee has to bow and every tongue has confessed because God is in him. 
God is in his name. It is by his name. Amen. This is how you know this is, uh, this is Jesus they're talking about because he says my name is in him. There's nowhere else in the Bible that God is saying he put his name in an angel. Amen. But he put it in this particular one that has a capital A. So he's saying my name is in Jesus. So whatever Jesus is says, it comes to pass. That's why there's life in his name. There's life when he opened his mouth. There's life when he says Jesus. It's life when he says that. Things are created when you call on the name of Jesus. This is how you know this is Jesus they're talking about. He says, but if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. So if it's Jesus' voice, why would God say I'm speaking? This is how you know it's Jesus and not a regular angel. He says, because when he speaks, it's me you hear. Amen. See, you got to wonder about that. See, because with the way we live, it could be our flesh. It could be a demonic presence. Or it could be the Holy Spirit with Jesus. And then we spend most of the day, because we haven't been in his presence enough, figuring out which one it is. But when you stay in his presence long enough, you know automatically who voice is speaking to you. There's no question. So when you start guessing and you start rebuking, God tell you, go bless that lady with $100. You know, oh, get thee behind me, Satan. Go give her your best, your best purse out your closet. Oh, get thee behind me, Satan. See, you rebuking God so that somebody else could be blessing you ten times as much. But since you won't let go of that small thing that you think is worth, is of value. See, we put value on the wrong thing. See, when God would bless you with 10 purses, but he won't because you won't give up the one. We live, I'm going to tell y'all something, and God had to deal with me on this. And when he deals with me, that means I got to step my game up. He said, you keep asking for a financial breakthrough, but you're in a $10 line. You won't go past $20. You won't go past $50. But you want a thousand and, and, and ten thousand dollar blessing. Well, how you gonna get there if you giving me ten ten dollars? How am I gonna put uh, now don't get me wrong, if that's what if that's your max, if that's what you got, but some of us got more and wonder why the blessings won't flow. Because we stay in the line beneath what we can give. Amen. He dealt with me. It's not, it doesn't, your, your tithes are what you're supposed to. It's, it's the offering. What are you offering up to him? If you're offering up $10 and you can continue to get $10, here's somebody put $10 in your hand. Somebody, you're like, this all I'm getting $10? Yeah, because you in the $10 line. Okay, that, all right. That means get back. Y'all quiet. Y'all don't want to hear about that. I did. I wanted to hear it because I need to speak it. So when I play this tape back or look at this tape, and then I'm still in the $10 line next year, I know why. See, I'm going to start changing some things in my life to get me from where I, where I am to where I want to be. It's a... When you're young, you have time to play. I ain't young no more. Amen. Got time to play. Amen. I got to get about my father's building because I know I'm supposed to be storing up things in heaven for when I get there. But if you never store up anything, how, what, what God going to give you if you ain't never stored up nothing? Amen. You get that, like Pastor said, you get that palm leaf in that robe and get pushed to the side. I don't want that. I want more than that. 
So let me continue to show you this. So he says, then I will be an enemy to thine enemies. So when you obey, God becomes an enemy to your enemy. How many need that? And an adversary to your adversaries. So he put plurals on that. So if you got more than one enemy and adversary, he's going to take care of it. He says, I'm going to be what you need. Mm. Can't get no shot on that. I'm going to be, everybody got enemies. But we can't be the one to take care of them. It has to be God. He says, for my angel shall go before thee. And, shall, and bring thee unto the Amorites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Canaanites, the Habasites, the Jebusites, and I'm going to cut them off. All your enemies that surround you. That's another name for all the enemies that you that coming up against you. He says, I'm going to cut them off. I'm going to destroy them completely. He says, thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down their image, images. Why would you want to serve somebody that ain't even stronger than you? Why are you bowing down to their gods and they can't hear you? Why are you bowing down to their gods and, and they can't give you a financial blessing? Why you keep bowing down to all these worldly gods that don't do nothing but Increase sin and death. He's telling you to destroy them. But we like playing with them. I ain't looking at you. We like, this, we like playing with the gods that he's telling us to stay away from. You go to the club. You go to the barbecues. They say, oh, you... Girl, I made, I made a little, what do you call it, mimosa. Oh, a little bit ain't no hurt me. <laughs> I could just take a cup. Next thing you know, you don't drunk a pitcher. <laughs> See, it's the, it's, the, it's the small, subtle things <laughs> that they begin to pull you with. Oh, me and you friends, I, oh, I'll go to church with you next week if you go here with me this, this Saturday. And then when you show up to pick them up, girl, I overslept. And, but they keep doing that. But you on, you on time for their stuff? And they can't never make it to yours? And you don't see nothing wrong with that? It's your enemies. See, it's, it's the friends you hang around that destroy your, the blessings in your hands. Because they see you prospering and they not moving, so they do little, little stuff to keep you distracted. Yeah. And we, sometimes we dumb as a box of rocks because we keep doing it. Right. Satan don't have to come at us. We allow our family and friends to do it. And then, then they got you bitter and angry and they sleeping good. God, God, Holy Spirit talking and tormenting you all night. You shouldn't have did this. You, you can't even sleep. You just in a pool of sweat. And they over snowing. Because they did their job. They got you all focused for 24 hours. Now you got to start all over with the Holy Spirit. They was like, job done. And you frustrated. It's the enemies that surround you. Beware of what he's saying to you. Look at where you at. Sometimes you got to sit back and reflect and say, now I've been doing this for a couple of weeks or a couple of days. This ain't working. It shouldn't take you no years to figure out that it ain't working. It shouldn't take you years to figure out that this person ain't right for you. Because if you're in prayer, already God is, is, 
I'm telling you, we, sometimes I be wondering, are oh, we on this present earth? Because alarms be dinging off all around us. Ding, ding, warning sign. Ding, ding. He like, oh, that ain't what I saw. Is you blind? That ain't what you saw. Or I'm going to give them another chance. Well, how many chances you got to give them? It's your enemies. They don't want to see you getting any better. They don't want to see you getting higher. They don't want to see you having more. They don't want to see you doing more because you're going to realize, baby, you ain't the one. And you're going to move on. And they don't want you moving. So you, so that's a that's a, a way of bowing down to them when you keep giving in to them. It's what I'm trying to get you to see. You bow down to their situation. You 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 I call I tell my girls, you dumb down yourself. You 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 dumb yourself down. So you can keep them as a friend. Or keep that man, or keep that girlfriend, or keep that job. You dumb yourself down. See, that's, that's a bowing down to a God situation. Because you, you, you bring yourself off the level that God has given you to come down to be at their level. So, so you'll get a phone call. <laughs> I, don't need, I don't need a phone call like that. When Jesus going Jesus to talk to you every day, but you say ain't nobody calling you. You ain't got no friends, but, but you got God, Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. You got three off the bat. But you don't never call them. You don't never ask them how they doing. And, and, it's, and the sad thing about it, they ain't jealous and they ain't opinionated. But you don't want to hear nothing they got to say. Okay, I'm going to move on. Verse 25. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. So he's going to bless your provisions if you talk to him. You know, God, I, want, I need you to see this. When you think you, you lacking, you got provision. But we think we lacking when it ain't what we want. I didn't want chicken again. I wanted the steak. Well, you... You got provision. If you want the desires of your heart, if you want a steak, I guess you need to get to praying. You got to pray a little more to, get to bring it up to a steak. Because right now you at chicken level. And some of us fall down to bologna. Because we ain't paying no attention to God. So why you eating that bologna is because you had a bologna prayer. Because he said he'll increase you. Well, he can't increase you no farther than where you're going. Amen. You still on white bread? And you want a crescent roll? I suggest you what? Mm. You want butter with that bread? <laughs> I suggest you increase the prayer. Amen. Because I've never seen in this Bible where God didn't take care of those that took care of him. Amen. Amen. But what level are you taking care of him at? See, oh, my grandma and them used to say, if you don't work, you don't eat. If you don't pray, you don't get Simple. God, I, I need to put that on the T-shirt. Don't work, you don't eat. Don't pray, you don't get. I'm going to send it out to you. I'll make you pay for it. Okay. He says, I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. If you sick, he says, if you obey his voice, now, the only way I know you can hear his voice is in prayer. Amen. 
So where you praying is where you go, where you at. So if you want sickness to cease, then you got to talk to him. And the only way you can talk to him is in prayer. So we got to get more on our knees. He didn't say, I want to give you sickness. He said, I want to take it away from you in the midst of your enemies. He says, in the midst. So wherever you at, he'll come and he'll heal you. You could be surrounded by a whole bunch of sick people, but in the midst, he's going to come and pick you out because you're the one in prayer and he's going to heal you out of all of them that's standing around you. Verse 26, and there shall be nothing cast their young, and there shall nothing cast their young. This means that you, can, you, you won't miscarriage. Women, this is physical and spiritual. Men, this is spiritual. You always got a seed. You always birthed in something. If it's a business, your health, your family. See, that's the spiritual. God said you, you won't miscarriage that. Your, your family won't fall apart. Your business will have finances. Your home will be secure. See, you won't miscarriage. It won't, it won't fall. It won't fail. It won't die. Women. It's physical and spiritual. If you want babies, you won't miscarriage them. But you're always carrying a spiritual seed. But you got to get up from that hurt that you're carrying and move from there. See, we do a lot of miscarriage because we, we, we don't, we don't D, D and C our spirit. We leave the old baggage from the last one, from the last one, from the last one, from the last one, and they still, we still carrying that. So we can't, we can't go to full term. We can't birth nothing because we still carrying the dead stuff in us. And, it's, and it kills. Every time something try to live in you, it dies all of a sudden. Why? Because you still carrying that old hurt. So what? That better be your sentence. So what? So what if he left you? So what if your parents didn't love you? So what if you ain't had an education? So what? God said he'll give it all back. You need a family, he'll give you that. You need finances, he'll give you that. You need education, he'll show you that. Ask Peter. Peter wasn't educated. But he got in God in prayer, and God gave him supernatural wisdom. So I, I'm, I'm trying to figure out, Christians, why we, I can't clean up, why we dumb, broke, disgusted, busted, why we all of this? Why people associate us with that? Why we do, why we, when people want to talk something negative, they find a Christian. When they want somebody to complain, they go find a Christian. But if they want to find the life or the part of somebody to build them up, they have to go get a circle, a sinner, a heathen. The heathen going to tell them, it's okay, dust yourself out. The, the, the Christian going to say, well, what you doing? You weren't praying, what you weren't, what you weren't doing? See, we're going to be judgmental. We're going to condemn. But it, the road should be reversed. When I'm down, I ought to be able to come to a Christian who's going to build me back up, not continue to tear me down, then hold your foot on my neck. Now neither one can't move. You can't move because your foot, your foot there, and I can't move because it's on top of my neck. And you're so busy worried about what the next person going to have instead of trying to get your own. Okay, moving on. He says, neither be barren 
oh my God, that's enough to make you shout to know that if you obey in his voice, whatever, whatever, every time you can, you can be pregnant all the time in the spirit. Cause I know good Lord, I don't want to be pregnant in no now. Girl, you talking about Sarah crying. Hallelujah. Asking God, why? Why me, Lord? Why now? No. But I want to be able to carry. If you, even if I'm a surrogate mother to some of your visions. You, come on, y'all got to see this. Sometimes you got to help somebody carry their they baby to full term with them. Can't get no amen. Y'all don't want to help nobody. That's all right. He says, and the number of your days shall be, be fulfilled. That means you won't die prematurely. You won't go home. You're going you gonna to have a full life. So I'm obeying God and I got provision. I'm healed. I'm well. So I, I got wealth. I got health. And, and my day is going to be long. I'm going to live a long, fulfilled life. See, he, he said, I'm going to fulfill it. So that means you ain't going to have no wants and no voids. So he's going to fulfill your life. But we, won't, we don't want... We don't want that. Go ahead. We don't want it. Because if we did, we'd be praying more. Amen. I will send my fear before thee. And I will destroy the people whom thou shall come. And will make all thy enemies turn their back from thee. I'm going to send your enemies running. I'm going to cause confusion. They're going to be wondering, why I even did, why I even touched, why I even put my mouth on them? Because he's going to bring fear on them. They're going to be scared to even speak your name. Come on, we talking about God. We ain't talking about you having to get up in their face and, and rock your neck. Oh, thank you. All we talking about is, all you got to do is speak a word. They, all you doing is praying and your enemies fleeing. We talking about the, we talking about God. Amen. God gonna do it. All I say is, bless him, bless him, Father, and he already knows. Sick him. <laughs> he says, and I'll send send hornets before thee, which shall drive the Hivites and the Canaanites and the Hittites before thee. Do y'all know when hornets attack, they attack to death? Come on. So God going to send hornets after your enemies who ain't going to stop attacking them. One of us got to go down. And you standing back in, and you looking. And they falling off. And they getting bit up. And they getting attacked. And God said he ain't going to let off them till they die. Amen. He says, I will not drive them out before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. He says, by little and little will I drive them out before thee until thou increase and inherit the land. You, 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 do you not understand the purpose? See, you wonder why this, this person stopped calling you. And then in a little bit, another one stopped calling you. And then next thing you know, another one stopped hanging around. See, he... He ain't getting rid of all your enemies at one time because then things you will, you will come complacent and things will go up a, around you. But as long as you got an enemy following you, you're going to work at it. You're going to do better. You're going to show yourself, approve. But when people stop drop, dropping off little by little, this is the reason. God is removing the enemies that's around you, but he won't move them all in one year or the stuff around you will grow up and take control of you. See, because he still needs your enemies working your money to be able to transfer it over. Mm. 
he, that enemy got to keep that house till you able to, to get to it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So he's not going to drive them all out in one year because they still got to work your projects. Amen. They still got to make you look good. Amen. I'm finna close. And I will set the bounds from the Red Sea even to the sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land unto your hands, and thou shalt drive them out before thee. So as far as the eye can see, you can claim it. Why is y'all quiet? As far as the eye can see, he going to give it to you. And y'all sit there. Y'all ain't happy? Y'all don't want it? Okay, God, take it back. They don't want the land. He says he's going to increase you through your enemy. And there's no rejoicing. He's going to increase you by their hand. And we don't even understand, we can't comprehend that. That the person that is set out to destroy you is the one that's going to increase you. The one that is trying to see you go down is the one that's got to help you. And you ain't got to tell them, God going to send them. The one that don't want to give you that increase on your job. Because you overqualified. They keep saying, oh, you overqualified. But he going to send somebody in a minute and say, oh, no, you got to give her that. Oh, no, you got to give him that. Lord. Help us to understand that you're trying to increase. Help us to understand that we don't have to always do the work ourselves. Help us to understand that he's going, you're going to increase us through our enemies. It's going to come from an unknown place. It's going to come from a place we don't even expect it to come. Because you're in the midst. Because we're praying to you. Last one. Thou shalt make no covenant with them, nor with their gods. They shall not dwell in thy land, lest they make thee sin against me. For if thou serve their gods, it will surely be a snare unto you. How can he tell you that? How, he, he says, you, see, this is what we do. We don't like the person. We know the person ain't no good for us. But once we get something new, we want to go back and show them and brag to them, and then they snare us again. We end up taking them to lunch. Then we end up having a number. Then we end up calling them. Then next thing you know, we back there in that same snare. And God has to take, take, start us all back over again. Sometimes, I'm telling you, Christians, we dumb as a box of rocks. He, we keep trying to brag on what we got. And God trying to give us more. But like he did the king, he showed, him they, he showed the enemy his house. He said, okay, since you showed it to him, now they can have it. See, now you need to understand that the angel of God is in the Old Testament. Jesus is in the Old Testament. He's waiting on us to catch up. See, we the one behind. But see, he's been here doing this same thing all this, all this time. Been taking care of us for so long. I, I, I will, I'm the one that ought to be complaining. How long, God, without be put up with this foolishness we doing? How long, God? We need to do better by him. Because he's doing great by us. But we keep half-stepping. We're not, if we be honest with ourselves, we're not giving God our fullness, the best of us, Amen. the best we could do. We're not, doing, we're not giving up our best talents, our best times, and our best ties. We're not even giving the tenth on it. How many, if, if you're doing time, you're supposed to at least be there 
2.5 out. How many hours you giving God a day? In the 24? Oh, I ain't got time. I ain't got time. I ain't got the time, God. You, maybe tomorrow. I ain't got time. Your talents. What could you do in this church to grow this church? What you doing with your talents? Are you giving him a tenth of that? Even if you ain't got no talents, you can come down here and clean. That's a talent. Lord, I'm going to walk away on the tags. Come on. Come on, Pastor. I ain't, I ain't got to discuss it. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's stand. Thank God for the word. Um, one thing that I was thinking about, y'all, while they was preaching, Lord Jesus, help me. I can't take that. I've been done fro. Let me get that to uh, me, Kelly. I can't handle that. I can't handle that. I can't handle that. Let me get Montanik. 